Learning Objective 7 from Section 4.2 is to interpret output from a statistical program and or calculator to interpret a confidence interval for the population mean, for example, GeoGebra. Suppose you take a random sample of 50 SLCC students and ask them how many states they have visited. The GeoGebra output below gives the results for computing a confidence interval estimate of the average number of states visited by all students at SLCC. Which of the following statements is the best interpretation of the confidence interval? Here's the GeoGebra output. We can see from this output that we used a confidence level of 0.99, the mean of the sample was 9.48, the standard deviation of the sample was 7.2, and the sample size was 50. The output gives us the lower and upper limits of the confidence interval, so that's our confidence interval there. All right, so we are going to need to do our interpretation. We're going to need the confidence level and this interval given down here. Here are the possible interpretations. Remember that to interpret a confidence interval, you need to talk about how confident you are that the interval captures the parameter. What's our parameter here? Well, the parameter that we are interested in is the average number of states visited by all students at Salt Lake Community College. All right, so let's look at these possible answers. You are 99% confident that the average number of states visited by the 50 students you surveyed is between 6.75 and 12.21. So there are a couple things wrong with this. First of all, it talks about how confident we are in the parameter. The thing that we need to be talking about how confident we are is in whether the interval captures the parameter. The parameter is a value that exists and we wish we knew about it, but we're estimating it using a confidence interval. So we want to talk about our confidence in the confidence interval, not in the parameter. The other problem with this um, statement is that it's talking about the average number visited by the 50 students that were surveyed. That's the sample statistic, not the population parameter. Notice that the, the sample mean is 9.48, which is the very center of the confidence interval. The way we got that lower and upper limit is by taking that point estimate 9.48 and adding and subtracting the margin of error. So we know for sure that the average number visited by the 50 students in the sample is between those two values. Let's move on to answer B. Based on the 99% confidence interval, there is evidence that the number of states all students at SLCC have visited is 9.48. So 9.48, again, is just the sample statistic. It's the point estimate. You can't actually visit 9.48 states. If you visit 0.48 of a state, you visited it. It counts for the whole state. Um, and so when we are talking about a confidence interval, we have to be talking about the mean for the whole population. Let's look at C. You are 99% confident that the interval between 6.75 and 12.21 contains the average number of states visited by all students at SLCC. This one is good. It talks about how confident we are that the interval, which is the correct interval, contains the parameter, which is the average number of states visited by all students at Salt Lake Community College. So that's our correct answer. Let's look at answer D just to talk about why that one's incorrect. About 99% of the students at SLCC have visited between 6.78 and 12.18 states. If we want to be less than 99% confident, we should take a smaller sample of students. Okay, the problem here is in the first sentence. This confidence interval does not tell us the values for 99% of the individuals. It tells us the values that we believe are likely values for the population parameter at that confidence level, so not at that percent of individuals. Now, if we did want to be less than 99% confident, we could take a smaller sample of students, but in general, we want to have a higher confidence level, so we wouldn't normally talk about how we could have a lower confidence level, such that there's a bigger risk that our interval would not capture the parameter.